Today on Toy Shiz, call it fate, call it karma, call it luck. I believe we're all here for a reason. Let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And I am very excited because today we are totally checking out the brand new Hasbro's Ghostbusters Plasma Series Wave 2 featuring all the afterlife movie characters like Trevor here. Not much known about old Trevor. I cannot wait to see this film. And you get to build a ghost. It's the Sentinel Terror Dog right here. Now I will put up the bios for each of the characters. You can screen grab them if you'd like. And then you have Lucky, the newest female Ghostbuster, looking all spiffy right there. And here's her deal for the movie, right? Whatever she may get herself into. Podcast, interesting name. Looking forward to see where this goes, right? And then you have... The originals right here, like Winston Zeddemore, old man Winston Zeddemore this time around. You can read up on him. This is very cool. Old man Vankman, Peter Vankman. Very cool just to have all these older versions of our favorite Ghostbusters, minus one of course. But Ray stands looking every bit as awesome. And here's a little bit about Ray, kind of, sort of. Now, like I said, I picked mine up at Target. They're starting to hit store shelves now, and here's the barcode if you want to go ahead and scan it in store and see if they got any sitting around the shop for you. So this is going to be fun. This is very near and dear to me. I am so stoked to have these, so stoked to check these out. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of ectoplasm. This is a look at the brand new Ghostbusters Afterlife Plasma Series Wave 2 by Hasbro. And just before we get into the figures, I'm going to let everyone know right off the bat, this was recorded several months before Ghostbusters Afterlife comes out. So if you're watching this after the fact, when you've seen the movie, know that I haven't, and it's all speculative. However, I will keep most to a minimum until the end of the video if you want to stay and check it out. I'll talk more about it, talk about my thoughts. I know precisely zero about this film other than what is kind of presented here i don't know spoilers i don't know anything else so we're going to talk about it but know this i have no idea nor do i want to know until i see the movie so let's check these out so we'll start off with lucky and again not much is known about these characters but it's a new female ghostbuster it's pretty cool and then she is kind of do like the mace windu thing she's got like a purple Neutrona Blast kind of going on. So that's pretty cool. It's the same exact type as we've gotten before. All stretchy. She comes with the Ghost Trap on wheels. And they all spin and turn all four. It's a nicely sculpted accessory. I'm glad that we got this. This is very, very cool. My one gripe, I wish that the trap opened. That would have been really cool. Especially to add like a ghost being sucked into it, trapped. That would have been awesome. And it does roll around. And Lucky herself... Nicely sculpted, nicely done. She has a little necklace on. It actually says Lucky. It's not the clearest, but it is there. And you can see it on the uh, promotional artwork on the side of the box. But yeah, it's a nicely done Ghostbusters figure. Now, she comes with the same big proton pack that the regular Ghostbusters have. And you can see this wire. It's, it's not the best. I really wish it was more flexible. They kind of changed it. You can pull it out. If you want, you can of course stick the Neutrona one on the side like you're reaching for it. You can kind of see that the backpacks are a little bit too big for these figures and I'm sure it has something to do obviously with the kids taking up the reins of being the Ghostbusters. Obviously there's not going to be a child size Ghostbusters pack, right? They're not for children as Egon would say. But this figure does get some nice articulation out of her. Her hair in the back will kind of rock to and fro it'll nudge into the straps of the proton pack but it's not too big a deal she's got nice articulation in the arms she doesn't have anything at the bicep but she'll rotate at the elbow single jointed nice hands grips the neutrona wand it's it all works in that sense i like the idea that yes the kids are putting on like a bigger proton pack she can kick out she's got thighs swivel she's got double jointed knees just go easy they're a little bit stuck on each of the figures actually to be honest and then she just has a boot rotation nothing that it swivels or 
rocks or anything like that. It just swivels right at the ankle. But I do like, you can put the new Trona Blast on like she's taken down a ghost. So it is a fun new way to do Ghostbusters. And I'm looking forward to her character in the film. Now again, with podcasts, you're getting like the Junior Ghostbusters. That's how I'm kind of taking this anyways, which is cool. And hopefully they don't go full on Junior Ghostbusters, like the real Ghostbusters. But he comes with one of my favorite accessories of all these two figures. You got these little mini puff guy. Now, I know it's just, it's a marketing tool, of course, but it is cool to have him. And you get to see podcast all up close. I'm not used to that name yet. He does come with a pair of ecto goggles. They're nicely done. I'll get more into that in just a second because it doesn't really fit him all too well. He comes with a remote control, which I'm going to gather that the remote control is for the new ghost trap. I'm put that together. So if you got lucky and you got podcast, maybe podcast is the trapper, kind of like Kylie from the extreme Ghostbusters. But he does come with some marshmallow mini puffed goo. And I actually really like that they came with this kind of stuff. It's all attachments, got a wrist one as well. Then he has this really interesting skull talisman thing, whatever this may be, whatever it turns out to be. It's cool. It fits onto his belt. It's interesting. It makes podcast really interesting. He's got the Ghostbuster logo. He's got his little stitched on podcast thing right there. Whoever's jumpsuit he took over, right? Just to kind of put his name on there. I like that. Same exact articulation as Lucky for the most part. Waist, legs, everything. Just in a smaller fashion. Single jointed elbows. He's got swivel at the thigh, double jointed knees. Again, go slower. A little bit different articulation of the shoes, being that he doesn't have any. It's just, there you go. It's not going to rock. It's not going to do anything. Peg holes on the bottom of his feet. And if you were wondering, he doesn't come with a proton pack. If you want to get an extra one or if you want to borrow it from any other figure, you can put it on him and secure it. Now, here's the thing about the goggles. They don't fit at all. You can't get him around his hair. Now, in the trailers and everything, he is wearing these over and over and over again. So it would have been cool to really put this on the character, but it, the band is just not big enough to get around his giant hair. So that's kind of a bummer. However, I will show you, they do fit on other characters. Not ones that you'd expect, though. And then you have Trevor, who I guess we're going to say Trevor Spangler at this point, right? Is it really much of a spoiler? But he's a cool looking figure, oddly enough, due to his role on Stranger Things. This is not the first time he's suited up as a Ghostbuster. But interestingly enough, this is like a cool accessory. And then it's also kind of like, seriously, yeah, I kind of expected better. It's a map. I like the way it's cut. It's from the film. You can kind of see this in the trailer. They're looking at it. It's like the mine shaft or something like that maybe who knows what it actually turns out to be but it's not fantastic this is another interesting accessory it's a bunch of the mini puffs not much detail on them they're like holding a ribbon or something or they're climbing something to that degree maybe they're supposed to be hanging on him you can kind of attach him where you want on trevor if you wanted to go that route but if you see the other mini puff that came with podcast he's got little accents in the face which really kind of bring them to life so in that sense i kind of wish that they were painted a little bit better so you can actually kind of see what's happening here but trevor himself is a nicely sculpted figure i would say that totally looks like old stranger things right there and yes same exact proton pack it's got different kind of shoes of course it's the oversized proton pack however it does kind of fit him a little bit better than say lucky and then of course podcast now i was totally thinking in pure ghostbuster fashion they just reused the same body type as lucky in some ways we'll say but no they actually switched to much stuff he's actually got the peter vankman look going on she's more tucking the pants and the boots you can of course attach the neutrona wand if you wanted to go that route it's just that the the wire is so cumbersome. I really wish it was just a string, to be honest with you. You can remove the pack, leave the pack on, whatever you want to do. But in either case, it's different, but it is a nice looking figure. Now, finally, we're getting into some familiar territory with old man Ray Stans. Well, he's not that old, but you know what I'm talking about. It kind of, it's time is going, right? Everything's getting older. All the actors are getting older. But I think this is the way to do it. And I'm curious to see how it's going to play out 
in the film. He comes with a Neutrona Blast this time around, which is what Wave 1 was sorely lacking, and you can kind of see how it compares to Lucky's Purple Blast, same kind of blast, just different colored plastic. And then, of course, he comes with Tobin's Spirit Guide, and I think that this is actually a really cool accessory to give to Ray Stance. I love all the details all over it. The back is all creased, right? Egon's opened this thing a thousand times. It's kind of like the Ghost Trap. It's just one of those really cool accessories where I totally dig it. I'm glad they included it, but I really wish it opened or you could do something to that extent. But with Ray himself. Now, this is the exact same body type that we got with all the Wave 1 Ghostbusters. So, you know the articulation. It's pretty good for what it is. You get to see the proton pack and the boots and all the wires and everything sticking out. So... Hopefully, this is what they end up looking like in the actual movie. He's kind of got like a big head going on. I'm just saying this time around. He's got some white on the side. Fortunately, you cannot get the goggles over his big old cranium on this one. But in either sense, again, it's nice to have the Ghostbusters back. Much like Winston here. One of my favorites. Winston, Zedimore, back in action. In what way? We don't know. But I am so looking forward to how they're all going to incorporate the original Buster's back. He comes with a Trona Blast. He comes with one of the worst accessories in this entire Wave 2. It's a classified section. It's very tongue-in-cheek. It's all little jokes if you know the Ghostbusters lore and the universe and everything else. However, while it is funny, haha, it, it's what is this made out of? It looks like it's part of the box. It's like a piece of cardboard. And then on one side, it's completely blank. So it's not a real accessory. Winston would never be reading this because then it would be some fourth wall breaking where they watch the movie. So you, this is the movie jokes on the thing. So one sense, it's funny, haha, but it is like the worst accessory to possibly give to old Winston. I would have much preferred a PKE meter or something. God, other than that. But Winston looks awesome. Very distinguished gentleman right here. This is very cool. He's got a little white going on in his hair as they should nice haircut nice wrinkles underneath the eyes he's just a little bit older but hey you know what we're not gonna ask him how old he is at this point the backpack proton pack looks good all the wires all the straps and everything it's the same exact body type articulation works well with this new head but again much like ray it's fun to have winston back on your shelf which brings us to the troublemaker himself peter vankman <laughs> This guy looks great. He is doing it up right. He's got some sweet salt and pepper hair going on. He comes with a Neutrona Blast. And he comes with a really interesting accessory this time around. It borderlines Winston, but it makes a lot more sense. We'll say that. And with it, yeah, you can conduct some experiments, right? No. I don't know. It's some kind of wavy lines. <laughs> yes. The cards are there. You got the star card. You got the circle card. So that makes sense for Peter Vankman. And I'll tell you again all day, much like Ray, much like Winston, however they end up looking in the film, if it's anything like this, I'll be happy with it. I love his hair on this exact same body type. He's got the pants that go over the boots. So they got that right in that sense. So I'm stoked with that. But it is very cool. He holds a new Trona wand. It's just... Ah, it brings a lot of nostalgia, right? While adding to all this. And of course, here's all three Ghostbusters back in the saddle. One last ghost busting problem to take care of. And that's yeah, just so awesome to see. And if only Egon was there, right? That's just, ah, oh, that's just, it's so crushing right there. But that's not the only figure left for this particular wave because we got to build a ghost, baby. And he's going to take down the Ghostbusters. Or will he? This is the Sentinel Terror Dog. And this is a very interesting design. Very interesting figure. We'll just say this. And unfortunately it lends itself to the idea that I had with Wave 1. Where whoever is on the Ghostbusting team for these knows Ghostbusters. But maybe doesn't. I don't know. Because... It seems like this is kind of like an afterthought or they ran out of time or something like that. It's a cool figure, but is it a build-a-ghost? Less articulation, all that kind of stuff? Pre-posed? 
It's not exactly plasma series, right? It looks like he's got like a pocket square in the back or he's a back pocket. I don't know. It's very odd. It's got good paint on it. I do like the translucent legs. Once we see the movie, perhaps I'll have a better grip on what I'm actually looking at. The head is a little bit loose. It kind of keeps popping off, unfortunately. But now we've got a terror dog that walks on two legs. He's got an articulated jaw. He's got nice eyes, nice face. Love the horns on him. Swivels at the arm, nothing at the elbow. He'll swivel at each of the wrists. He's got nice claws to him. His legs, like I said, very pre-posed. Essentially, will swivel at both of the thighs and nothing else. So, it's just okay. You're going to have a heck of a time standing him if he's not posed correctly with the arms and such. But, once you kind of get him, that sweet spot right there. Like I said, it's an interesting design, but the articulation is very sorely lacking. Now, to kind of show you the differences between, let's say, race stance from Wave 1 and now Wave 2, the colors for the new Wave 2 uniform are a lot more spot on to what we should be seeing with Ghostbusters. I thought with Wave 1, they were a little bit too light, a little bit too white in the coloring. They're supposed to be more of that muted sort of gray-brown area, and I think that the new Wave hits it perfectly. And if you were wondering... The goggles from podcast will fit this race stance, but it won't fit the forehead of the new race stance. So a little bit bigger head from wave one to wave two. Just saying, if you were wondering in terms of the Mattel, was it 2016 Ghostbusters, the all female Ghostbusters cast, they will work with the Plasma series. It depends on your taste, but I think the kids like podcast and Lucky, they will fit in nicely with the new Plasma series Ghostbusters. Whether or not you include the Mattel ones, yeah, it's up to you. But just to kind of show you, Winston here from the old Mattel line matched up with the Plasma series. They're not terribly out of scale, but they are a bit different in terms of stylistic approach. But if you had Trevor, or like I said, Lucky Podcast, they'll fit in with the Mattel ones as well. And then to see Dana... She matches up perfectly with Old Man Stance and Trevor. So all of them are pretty much in and around the correct scaling right there. Now this is actually kind of fun. Despite the lack of articulation for the Terror Dog, it does look cool paired up with Gozer. So if you have any of the Terror Dogs, Gozer, things of that nature, it's actually fun to kind of pose them together. With the Sentinel Terror Dog, it's like they took let's say the Hasbro Terror Dog, and then you got the Diamond Select one, the one that's more of a clear blue plastic, and kind of mash them together to get this Sentinel Terror Dog. And the scaling is cool. I expect this character will be a taller character. If he wasn't so pre-posed, he would be a very tall looking character. So he is cool in that sense, but all day, this is not the appropriate type of articulation that we're really looking for with the plasma series in all honesty it really does seem like an afterthought i like the character i think he's cool looking and i'm happy to put a new ghost on my shelf but he is really sorely lacking in the design and the execution from what we really want to expect now from a modern 2021 ghostbusters line and before anybody asks <laughs> I got you. Not to worries. No, the Plasma Series Ecto-1 that they released does not fit with these figures either. So, yes, the Ecto Plasma Series is in name only. It's supposed to be a nice replica. They're, as far as they've said, which is nothing, there's not going to be figures released for this Ecto-1. If they do at a later time, cool. But that was not the goal to be had here. But... In all honesty, if you got a nice shelf, if you want to display your Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Afterlife, it does look good in the background. The new one, the Fright Features Ecto-1, actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to say it fits, but it really does work well with the new Fright Features Ghostbusters, but I'll have a whole new video up looking at them and the ghosts as well coming soon. But you can see the scaling, yeah, it's just not, it's not going to work. Maybe for the kids, right? But I think the best part about this new wave is getting the older versions of the Ghostbusters. It's sad in a way. We're not going to be getting Egon. I can't say I wouldn't mind like a clear plastic Egon, Ghost Egon. It's sad and it is fun to see your Ghostbusters back on the shelf 
and fighting ghosts and monsters. So that's really going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new Plasma Series Wave 2 by Hasbro. For looking at Wave 1, there are some definite improvements. And then there's also a lot of backtracks as well, especially in the Build-A-Ghost, where it's kind of like, all right, that's just weird, right? But if you look at the wave in totality, it's a nice wave. You're getting characters from the movie, how they interact, what is exactly going to happen in the film, remains to be seen. I would say the accessories, for the most part, work. There's a lot of characters that I'm like, what is this accessory? Specifically, Winston, giving him a classifieds ads. It's not so much the paper itself. If it looked like Trevor's map, I would be singing a different tune. It's literally just a piece of cardboard, and it looks like it came right from the packaging. It's not very good at all. The Ghostbusters look good. I think everything scales nicely. The goggles do not fit on top of podcast head, which is really weird. The big thing from the movie, or at least the trailers that we've seen, I really expect that to work. Yeah, you can put it on other characters, but to really recreate what you want to see in the movie, why didn't they fit it to work? I don't know. The ghost trap is cool. The remote control is cool. I like all the little mini puffs, despite being exactly what I know they are. They're adorable little marketing peeps, you know what I mean? <laughs> But in either case, I would say the Terror Dog is a total bust. If you're buying it for that, I think you may be really disappointed. If you're a big fan of Ghostbusters like I am, you kind of look at it and you go, okay, well, I'm glad to be getting a new Ghost, but it's not the best. Figures overall are nice. I like when you pose them and you get the plasma streams going and you put them all together and they're fun. But I really honestly do believe they need to ramp up the Ghostbusters franchise that Hasbro is doing because as of right now it's very lackluster and for me a huge Ghostbusters fan it's really disappointing so I'm curious to know what you guys think about these new figures will you be grabbing them have you already comment below let me know let's talk everything Ghostbusters Afterlife and I'm gonna leave you guys with that as always drink some great coffee eat some great food but most importantly remember now Let's talk about my thoughts as far as what the movie may entail. Now, there's not a whole lot to really decipher from the trailer. The figures, as much as I was like, okay, Hasbro kind of gave it away. I wasn't really expecting to see the figures of the Ghostbusters so soon, right? The old man Ghostbusters. But it does look cool in that sense, and I'm glad to have them hopefully suiting up again. To bust some Gozer, Zool, all that kind of stuff. Whatever is returning, right, from that mine shaft. And kind of talking about it with friends. I kind of expect them to go more original Ghostbusters without going too far into it. Doing the whole Force Awakens kind of thing. I think it'll tread lightly. I think it'll be a nice romp back into the Ghostbusters universe while setting up for more. The identity of the Terror Sentinel dog, it's probably going to be the Paul Rudd character or the mom character from the new Ghostbusters movie if they really wanted to go that route. I kind of hope they don't go that route, but judging from the trailer, you see the Terror dog running through the Walmart and all that kind of stuff, and it finally jumps on his car. So I'm assuming, okay, he's basically the key master and, you know, she's the gatekeeper and <laughs> Gozer shows up. Who knows, right? But... I really honestly hope we see Slimer. I'm kind of hoping, I was initially thinking that in the ghost trap from the trailer, you know, that maybe that'll be Slimer. Like he's been trapped for years. You know what I mean? That'd be kind of funny. But uh, it'll probably be that Muncher ghost, which is actually a really nice Fright Features uh, ghost as well. And again, I'll have a video looking at those. But overall, again, those are my thoughts. I'm not gonna spoil myself. I don't wanna know anything. I'm happy with the figures. I'm happy getting these. It gets me excited for the film. It's kind of like Star Wars, where all the figures would come out, and you're like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So I don't take it too far as to be like spoilers. It's really the story that I'm concerned about. And to be honest here, I don't think they're really letting out too many spoilery plot points so far. But that's going to wrap it up, and that's my outro. <laughs> Really long outro. Hopefully it doesn't keep you too long. But I wanted to share my thoughts on the Ghostbusters, not really interfere with the actual video if you came here just for the figures so i'll leave you guys with that adios